In this video, I thought I would show you how you might create an accounts payable type statement. And so I'll create a, a query in a form and a report uh, for using this little inventory database that's on the O drive. So you start out here and I'll go here and there's a little message I created. And I think I'll just close this for now. I'm not too interested in that. What I'm interested in are the items that are on order and then I want to categorize those items that I've ordered over a time period and figure out how much I owe different companies. That's the basic, basic idea. So I might use this table items on order and create a form from it. So if I uh, go to create and form, here's a form that uh, has the items on order. And this, this uh, little subform here is the uh, items that have been received. So I can make this look a little bit uh, nicer. I can go to design view. And for some reason, I have to right click to get these fields to come up. But I want to uh, make this, I want to remove the layout on this so that I can make this a little bit bigger. And I think I will add a field. I'm going to show all the fields. Oops. I want to show a picture uh, of the item that's on order. I don't need that part, so I'll just delete it. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. Something like that. That's the basic idea. So it looks like this. I've got this gasket on order. I ordered a hundred of them from Astro Gasket, and it's on a, a certain date. It's on that date that I ordered it. Uh, so that's the idea. So I might save this as an items on order form. Uh, so that's a way to, to create a form. Now I might, uh, to, to create a, a report based on a query on which items have been ordered, I can go to Query Design, and I'm interested in the items from suppliers that I've placed orders with. So I want, want items and I want suppliers. Well, these tables aren't related right now. They're related via this items on an order table and the orders created table. So here I have uh, it's kind of messy there. Make it look better. That looks a little bit better. So here I've got, I want the, the name of the supplier and the items that I've, um, that I have and only the items that I have on order will show up and I want the quantity ordered and the price per item and the date. So I'm going to say between these dates show me what I owe. So what I want to do is multiply quantity times price. I need to save this and I'll save this as uh, items on order. I need to save it before I can use this builder to say I want to multiply price times quantity and change that to total that's the total price. And now when I run this, that total price shows up. And I'll I'll save this as, um, did I already save it? It's called items on order. I guess I already saved it. Oh yeah, I did save it because I have to do that to do the total. And now I'm going to create a report. And in this case, I'll, I'll uh, use a criteria that uh, will uh, save. I want all the orders between a certain time period, like in the month of February of, of 11. So I'm going to change that just a little bit to where I say date placed. I'm going to have a criteria. I'm going to use between um, 2-1-2011 and 2-27. 2011, something like that. And I, I might want to save this as um, the items that are on order over those time periods, just so I, I know for sure. And now I want to create a report based on this um, query. So there's a report based on the query, sort of the default. And you know maybe I can make this look a little bit better. Uh, make these things 
uh, fit one page. It's nice that they fit one page. Now it fits on one page. So I'll add a group. I want to group on name of supplier. And I want to subtotal. So if I do more, I want to total on total is the name of the field. I want to sum it up and put the subtotal in the group footer. And I needed to change this format to currency for it to show up. And so there you have an accounts payable for the month of February.